This is everything. This is worth more than subscribers, than money. This is the truth. I think it went a little too fast, a little too profound. Let's back up. A lot of you guys have asked why I don't monetize my channel. And part of that answer is what's inside that storage locker right there. May I introduce? Time machine. It's like in 250 pieces right now, but when it's fully built out, time machine. See, like the trickiest thing is, is just finding out that thing that you love so much that you would do it for free, that it fills your bucket up. You can make $10 million if you figure that out and then you also figure out what mo- Yo. Hey baby, you home? No, I'm at the storage place. I'm showing the time machine. Got him. You guys have no idea what this is. Oh, baby. For me, there is no better feeling on earth than finding yourself out in the middle of the desert and you discover some random piece of art way out there in the middle of nowhere. Nothing else is around. You find it and you realize that it was made just for you. It's not sponsored by a company, no one's selling anything. Most likely the artist won't even recoup their investment. It was created just to inspire you. In the spirit of Burning Man, I have blurred out my logos and disabled all my affiliate links for this episode. There needs to be a balance between art and commerce, and it's good to take a break from the commerce side every now and then. And also, as an artist bound by the media agreement, uh, Burning Man made me. This episode is not about Burning Man. This is about being an artist and going way outside of your comfort zone to create a body of work, an expression of something within. And just how the f do you do that? Oh, I definitely would not do this project over again. But I'm so happy I did it and that I never have to do it again. Do you still want to make a Burning Man art piece this year? Today is basically the last day to apply. I wanna know if I can put your name down. As of right now, it's just Emily and myself. Love you, bye. Without a doubt, the hardest part of any creative project is gonna be finding the funding. Surprisingly, crowdfunding is not the first place you should look. You see, I adhere to the 80-20 rule in economics. It's also known as the Pareto Theory or the Law of Vital Few. They use this in insurance quotes, in healthcare premiums, sports. They use this for a lot of things. In economics, it states 80% of your money generated will be from 20% of the workforce. So if you're a company, you have 100 employees, 20 of those employees are going to raise 80% of all the revenue the company pulls in. Instead of doing a crowdfunding campaign targeting the whole pie, Let's do a specific target for just those 20% and we target those bigger fish. Who's a bigger fish? An organization. Time is a very difficult thing to pin down. We think of time as a one-way motion from the past, through the present, and on into the future. We seem to be driven along in such a way that what happens now and what will happen is always the result of what has happened in the past. For the time machine, 80% of the money raised was from a Burning Man grant. Burning Man is kind of like a unicorn organization. They have over a million dollars to give away each and every year for arts that are on Playa or off Playa. But there are a ton of organizations out there and there are tools to align you with these organizations. In the description below, I left several links to websites that offer grant opportunities and all you have to do is just seek them out and apply. A great piece of advice that I got from a dear friend of mine, Jen Lewin, who is a phenomenal artist. You've seen her work in some of my videos. You should definitely check out her stuff. Now, I had never done a grant before and she had told me, you're basically asking people to give you money on the following criteria. Number one, you have a well thought out idea. 
Number two, you have the resources, knowledge, and execution to carry out that idea. And number three, you're not gonna run off with the money. You can also use this approach for your next step, which would be a crowdfunding campaign. Now, Jen also recommended that I use my prior work as a reference. So for the grant proposal, as well as my crowdfunding campaign through Hatch Fund, I use my Burning Man short film, Deep Playa Sunrise, as a proof of concept. Now, if you don't have any past work, if this is your first project, then what I recommend is manufacturing a proof of concept. This can be a simple test shoot, something that conveys the vision, but on a cheaper, much more manageable scale. So for my very first piece of work, I went out to the desert, brought some living room stuff. I shot a little scene or two that conveyed the aesthetic of the film, and it got me the funding on that project. Today is April 4th, a month after I was notified about the grant. So far, I have started assembling a team. Now would also be a good time to preface, I've actually never done this stuff. <laughs> Today we lost our architect. It's not that great, but it's also lesson for me and leadership. I'm more motivated than ever to finish the project, get everything done. So maybe this is what I needed. So doing something you've never done before inherently has a lot of fear attached to it. Some voices come up. These things are programmed into you from either your parents or from some bad interaction at school. The one that came up for me was that I was just woefully unqualified. I'm a filmmaker. What business do I have creating a 3,500 pound sculpture made out of wood and steel and schlepping it to the desert? Yes, I am unqualified but so is every other artist who's ever attempted anything. And you only need to do it once, and suddenly you're qualified. We had to relocate because the shop that we were building it in didn't really work out. My friend, who's a carpenter, and he's got a woodworking shop. <laughs> Ah, here we go. I drew this three weeks before the time machine was finished, and this was my idea of a little cart system so that we wouldn't have to take it apart. Uh, I got a little dolly that we'd make, strap the dolly to the time machine, we tip it back, and then we load this up onto a trailer. Then we hook up the trailer to the car, and I drive it over a cliff. No, it's definitely as bad as it looks. I might be the only person to hurt themselves on a Segway. This feels a little bit like um, Hero's Journey shit. Right before the climax, a hero has to get smacked down one more time before he can find the strength. Ow. I front our out. I'm not crazy. <laughs>
this question was the basis of the time machine. It's the basis of all time travel fantasies. If you could travel back in time, what would you change? We posted this question along with scrap paper and a post box so people could anonymously fill out their answers and drop it in the box. This is lifetimes worth of wisdom of what people hold so dear what they wish they could go back and rewind. Years of regrets and misplaced values. This is what people wish they had done. As an artist, there's no better compliment than your work having some sort of impact on someone else. But it's more than that. It's a magnifying glass on humanity. Burning Man is like mecca for interactive art. It's so incredibly important to plant these kind of devices in your work. It makes everything worth it. This is unfiltered truth. There was a couple of tasteful dick drawings in here. I mean, we're talking good ones. I think the guy spent like 20 or 30 minutes. That's to be expected as Burning Man. But the rest of this, truth. This is what's left of the time machine. This year I, uh, I didn't bring any art. Well, I did bring one piece of art. I brought this painting that my friend painted for me a couple years ago. This represents everything that I don't like of the person I was when I was 25. Now this isn't to disrespect my friend Emma Jacobs who painted it. She's a phenomenal painter. She did an amazing job. She did exactly what I wanted. It's just not me anymore. You can burn it? You can put it in the temple? Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Put your stuff in temple. You're able to, it's a shrine that they burn and you get to send your messages up to you know, loved ones that passed away. You can write messages to yourself. You can let go of things you've been holding on to. It paints a different side of Burning Man. So probably the coolest thing about Burning Man is that everything's free, especially the art. There's no brands that are sponsoring it. There's no commercials, there's no commodification. There's none of that bullshit. People invested their money, their time. They stepped outside of their comfort zone, created this thing for the sole purpose of blowing your mind for inspiring you, to remind you that you're human. Some of the best things in life are free. Camaraderie, friendship, love, inspiration. Art is something to live for. Not a sponsorship, not a commercial, not fucking toothpaste. If you find yourself comfortable enough, you make enough money, and you live in the state of like finding inspiration and creation, that is my definition of making it. You've made it. Under extreme conditions, general relativity and quantum theory allow time to behave like another dimension of space. This removes the distinction between time and space, and means the loss of evolution can also determine the initial state. The universe can spontaneously create itself out of nothing. We are all time travelers, journeying together into the future. But let us work together to make that future a place we want to visit. Be brave, be determined, overcome the odds. It can be done. <laughs>